We've all seen those social media posts that tell us to choose happiness. Those posts that tell us to greet every obstacle we're faced with with enthusiasm, and that if only we were more optimistic about whatever we're going through, then we could be happier. And I bet we've all rolled our eyes and wished it was that simple. As someone who struggled with her mental health for, well, as long as I can remember, I know for certain that choosing happiness is definitely not as easy as turning on a light switch. However, what always gets me about these posts is that I feel like there is a shred of truth to them. I could choose to be more optimistic or to be grateful for what I already have, or I could choose to just smile more. And while I know that those things wouldn't be a magical cure for whatever I'm going through, Rationally, I know that they probably would help me to feel a little bit better. So why don't I choose to do them? I often end up in these vicious cycles of beating myself up for not choosing happiness and then having to remind myself that happiness isn't a choice. But if happiness isn't a choice, then what is it? Happiness is a state of mind associated with joy and contentment. It's a feeling you get when you're in a room full of people you love and there isn't anywhere else you'd rather be. It's the excitement you get when you see your favourite band performing live. It's the sense of pride and accomplishment you feel when you win an award or achieve something you've been working on for a very long time. It can be found in the smaller things in life too. It can be going to your favourite coffee shop and reading a book or going to your favourite exercise class or eating a home-cooked Sunday roast or spending time with your loved ones or pets. There is a whole other conversation to be had here about the difference between mental health and contentedness and happiness. Are they the same thing or are they slightly different but we don't have time to go into that in this video i've written a whole blog post just about that which i'll link below if you want to read more about that i'm aware that mental health and contentedness and happiness can be very different things depending on how you define them but for the sake of this video i'm going to kind of pretend that the words are interchangeable if you want me to make a whole other video on that topic alone then leave a comment below letting me know we all have things that make us happy activities people memories those things will vary from person to person and what works for me won't necessarily work for you but we all have different things that make us happy. If I asked you to write down a list of 10 things that make you happy right now, I bet most of you could do that without thinking. But if we know what makes us happy, then why aren't we? Why don't we do more of those activities that we love and spend more time with the people who we love? I have struggled with my mental health for as long as I can remember, and I often beat myself up for not doing more of those things, for not choosing to be more optimistic and trying to be happier. Why do I so often feel like I can't help but self-sabotage? Why can't I find the motivation to do the things that I know would make me feel better? And when I was younger, this really frustrated me. Why wasn't I able to just choose happiness? So I did what any confused teenager would do, and I turned to the internet. I started watching YouTube videos and listening to podcasts about how to be happier. I learned about minimalism and a positive mindset, and I heard many different people preaching about the different habits that they claimed to change their life, such as exercising or journaling regularly. So I started trying to apply these things to my own life. And while it wasn't a miracle cure, it did help. I knew I was onto something. But if I was that close to finding the secret to happiness, then why couldn't I just stop doing these habits all of the time? If that was all it was going to take for me to be happy, then why couldn't I find the motivation to do it? And so, in my first year of university, when I heard about an extracurricular module called The Science of Happiness, I decided to enrol because I knew that I was onto something, but I really wanted to learn more. It was a psychology module about wellness and how to be happier, based on the field of positive psychology. As much as my friends tease me that this was silly, it's actually one of the best extracurricular things I've done during my time at university. While I'd already learned a lot about wellness and mindfulness, this course really solidified those things. It backed them up with science and explained why they work. Apparently, some time ago, some psychologists decided they were sick of studying depressing topics such as psychopaths and holocaust, and that they wanted to study more positive topics such as happiness and wellness. I'm not sure why they would want to do that, but they did. They asked questions such as what makes us happy, and is our happiness level predetermined, or is it something that we can change? Thus was born the field of positive psychology. Here's a quick summary of some of their findings. Firstly, they found that there are two elements to happiness. The first is how happy you are with your life. This is things such as, are you progressing towards goals that you've set? Do you feel like a valuable member of society? This is what a lot of people would often refer to as contentedness. And the second element is how happy you are within your life. Are you experiencing those emotions of joy and elatedness often? Secondly, they found that while there is a genetic component to how happy you are, it is by no means an absolute. While your genetics may make you more or less predisposed to being happy, there is still so much you can do to change your happiness levels. Thirdly, they found that your life circumstances don't really determine how happy you are. Obviously, if you're living in extreme poverty or you're experiencing regular abuse, then those things are going to affect how happy you are, and escaping those situations will improve your well-being. However, for the average person, once you've achieved a comfortable life, money and fame and a big house are not the things that make you happy. Fourthly, they found that while good situations such as having a good job or a good family can make you happy, actually the opposite is more true, that being happy will lead you to a good job or to a good family. This is because you'll be more creative and social and motivated. This is why it's so important to try and work on our happiness. You can't wait until you find the perfect job to be happy, because being happy will help you to find the perfect job. And lastly, they found that there are things that you can do to be happier, but that there is no quick fix. 
So don't believe any self-help book that tells you that there is. There is no magical secret to happiness. It's all about finding sustainable habits and routines that you can implement into your life in the long term that will help to nourish your well-being. And while there are habits and practices that will help you to do this, knowing that simply isn't enough. You have to put in the practice if you want to see the results. And so this is why I have come to think of happiness as a skill. Most of the advice that I learned on that course was obvious. They explained why we should journal, exercise, sleep better, meditate. But the one thing that really stuck with me is this idea of viewing happiness as a skill. I had heard before the saying that happiness is a choice, but that didn't sit well with me because I knew firsthand just how difficult bad mental health could make it to choose happiness. And that as much as we try to reframe things and look on the bright side, it isn't as simple as flicking a light switch. However, the analogy of viewing happiness as a skill is an idea that makes much more sense to me because it recognises that while there are things that we can choose to do, such as journaling and exercise, which have been proven to improve our contentedness, these things can be difficult to do or to find the motivation to do, and they won't magically make us happier overnight. Happiness like any other skill is something that we have to practice and develop over time if we want to be good at it. And just like other skills, if we take a break from working on it for too long, then our proficiency will regress and we'll have to rebuild our progress. Note that this isn't necessarily something to be ashamed of. Sometimes we have good reasons to put our happiness on the back burner. For example, if we have major deadlines or if someone else is going through something, we really want to be there for them. But it's important to remember that once we've gotten through that, we're going to have to retrain our happiness muscle. You can't expect to magically return to a high level of happiness if you've been neglecting these practices for months. I also really like this analogy because it leaves room for the idea that some people will naturally be better at being happier than others and that some people will have interfering conditions or disabilities that make it really hard for them to practice happiness. You can choose to learn to play the piano and you can choose how much you practice but you can't choose to become a master overnight. Happiness is exactly the same. You can decide that you're going to nurture it and you can do these things that will help you to cultivate a sense of happiness in your life but it will take time and effort and practice and consistency before you really notice significant differences in your life. No matter what you're going through, I believe that there are things that you can do to nurture your well-being. However, it's important to remember that we're all going through different things and we're all going to have different experiences. Some of us are going to have more time to dedicate towards this than others and we're all going to see different results. And it's also important to remember not to judge other people on their mental well-being or how much effort they're putting towards improving their mental well-being. As I said, they might be going through some really difficult situations that mean they can't find the time or motivation to work on it. And that is absolutely fine. We're all going to experience different seasons in our life. Sometimes we're going to choose to prioritise happiness and sometimes we're not. The message that I want to leave you with is that happiness can be really hard work sometimes, but that it's always worth it. As humans, we are stuck inside of our brains 24 seven. And to be honest, sometimes this existence makes absolutely no sense to me. But every morning I wake up and I'm still in this body and I'm still on this planet. So we may as well try and make the most of it. Life is really short. And if you sit around waiting to be happy, then you might never be. No matter what hardships you're going through, habits like journaling and exercise won't magically make your problems go away, but they might help to improve your well-being and they might help you to cope with whatever you're going through. You deserve to be as happy as you can be in this moment, even if that's not the happiest that you're ever going to be in your life. Happiness doesn't have to be this black or white absolute thing. It's possible to be a little bit happy and to experience small moments of joy, even if you're going through something that prevents you from being 100% happy with your life. Don't compare your levels of happiness to someone else because we're all living completely different lives. Instead, focus on building sustainable routines that help you to live the best life that you can, whatever you're going through. Over the course of my next few videos, I'm going to share with you lots more on this topic. I'm going to share with you some of the misconceptions about happiness, as well as what you can do to foster happiness in your life. Leave a comment below letting me know any questions that you have, any topics you would like me to see me discuss, and I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic as a whole. Most of the information in this video came from the wonderful Laurie Santos. She created a course at Yale, which is now available as an online course on Coursera for free called The Science of Wellbeing. And that's actually what inspired my university to do the course called The Science of Happiness. So if you want to take a course on the subject, you can go to Coursera and take her course for free. And I would highly recommend it. She has taken all of this information across the field of positive psychology and made it really accessible and easy to understand. And she also has a wonderful podcast called The Happiness Lab. So definitely go check that out too. My name is Louise and thank you for watching this video. If you want to learn more about me, the best places to find me are Instagram and YouTube at Louise's Life.